not going to hurt you. Watch him on that side. Easy now, little fella. <laughs> First part of the season. Must be spring. What's the matter, little fella? You lost? Something must have happened to his mother. She wouldn't leave him out here alone. Well, what do we do? We can't desert him. The coyotes will get him sure. You know, when I was a kid around her, old Cap Foster had a place near here where he took care of all the wounded animals and little strays like this. Us kids used to call it uh, Cap Sanitarium. <laughs> here, hand him up to me. Tell the boys to take the horses on up to the Lazy Death. I'll be up there in a little while. All right. Take it easy, old girl. You look like you're badly hurt. Well, oh, shit. Hey, you, Jimmy. I thought you'd remember me. Roy. Hi, you, Cap. What are you doing out here? I'm delivering some horses for the Lazy W. I brought you a patient. Well, let me have the little fellow. I knew I'd find you up here taking care of the animals. He'll always find me here, Roy. Look, must be his mother. No doubt it is. What happened to her, Cap? She's been shot. Guess she dragged herself up here to see if I could help her. I don't know how badly she's hurt yet. Shot? Well, this isn't deer season. I know, but this is the work of professional hunters. You know, I retired from the Army nearly 20 years ago. These killers started slaughtering so much game that they deputized me to help track them down. You mean it's a business? Big business. There's millions in it, and it's well organized. They're wiping out the natural game and wildlife of this country faster than they're going to be replaced. What happened to this old girl is happening to thousands of deer in the United States. They're being slaughtered by these professional hunters using every illegal method in or out of season. Ducks, geese, and other game birds of America are recklessly destroyed and sold to fancy clubs in all our large cities. The people who buy this outlawed game are as guilty as you who kill it. By killing game out of season, you are robbing every American boy of his natural heritage to hunt as a sport as protected by the law. It is people like you who slaughtered up the buffalo and the wild pigeon until they have completely disappeared. In passing sentence, it is the opinion of this court that racketeers of your type must be exposed as the lowest, most contemptible breed of all criminals. That's a pretty bad situation, Cap. I don't blame you for coming back into this service. Is there anything I can do to help? Not now, Roy. Maybe later. I think I'm getting closer to these killers. Poor old girl. So you sold some horses to the Lazy W, eh? Yeah. I've been wondering what they were planning to do. I guess they're going to raise a few. Oh, well, by the way, how are the kids? <laughs> they're not kids anymore, Roy. Wait till you see them. Of course, you and the boys are planning to stay with us. We wouldn't stay anyplace else. <laughs> you know, Roy, whenever I have to do something like this, it makes me more determined to round up the ones responsible for these killings. I understand, Cap. But she's hurt so badly, it's the only humane thing to do. We'll see you this evening.
and bring him over here. Well, we got him here okay, Roy. Good. Miss Loring, Roy Rogers. So nice to meet you. How do you do? This is Matt Wilkes, my ranch foreman. Hiya, Matt. Glad to know you. The boys told me about finding a little fawn. Were you able to find his mother? Yes. She dragged herself up to the sanitarium where Cap Foster looks after all the animals around here. She'd been shot by some hunters and was hurt so badly that she had to be destroyed. How terrible. I don't understand how people can do things like that. Poor little fawn. Oh, he'll be all right. Cap Foster will look after him. The horses look fine. If you step inside, I'll pay you for them now. I'd like to buy the Pinto Pony, too. Oh, no. He's not for sale. Oh? Get all the horses in the corral, fellas. Don't spend all that money in one place. <laughs> hey, you, Rogers. I told you years ago what I was going to do to you the next time I saw you. Yeah, I remember. And I still don't think you can do it. I think I could, with a little help. <laughs> you're a little bigger and tougher than you used to be. Hey, you guys don't get out in the middle of the road, you're both going to need a lot of help. <laughs> Hurry up, Cookie, before one of these ducks lays an egg. Huh, that will make the magazine cover for sure. <laughs> I think I'm all ready now. Let me see. Lights? Lambs? Oh, shucks. I forgot the flash powder. That's it. There. Chin up. That's it. Snake eyes. <laughs> now, you smile pretty and I'll blow the mating con. You cut off that love stuff. and my homemade flash powder. <laughs> Roy. Hiya, Cookie. Doggone, am I glad to see you. You're sure lucky you weren't here a minute ago. Ever did hear or see. You ought to be more careful, Cookie. What's the matter, sis? Nothing that can't be fixed. Roy Rogers, if this thing was loaded, you'd hear another explosion around here. Hiya, Pappy. Hello, Roy. Oh. Gee, you look good. It's been a long time. Yeah. You haven't changed much. Your face was dirty the last time I saw you. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was. Brought you a present. You did? Mm-hmm. Well, why is it? Outside. Oh, Roy. You didn't... It isn't... Don't you remember what I promised you? Oh, Roy. So the panel panel party. Party. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Jean. Hello. So nice to see you again, Roy. Oh, I see you two know each other. Oh, yes. Quite well. Oh, been hunting? <laughs> uh, you'll have to pardon us. 
Come on, Roy. Excuse me. Would you mind holding this for me? Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. oh, here, I'll take it. Uh -huh. Mr. Bullfincher, will you please uh -huh. develop this negative for me? Uh, surely. Have them ready next week. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bert, come to the ranch tonight. I want to talk to you. Oh, sure, Jean. I'll be there. Here, Cookie, catch. See ya. I go riding in the air Where the wide open plains I roam In the air Till the sun through the hills goes hiding In the air There will always be someone glad when I come home In the air In the air And today home we go For a cowboy has to sing And a cowboy has to yell For his heart would break inside of him at the gates of the home corral There's a tired pony glad that it's over With a song in my heart so am I For tonight we'll be dreaming of clover And we always will until the day we die It's the end, it's the end of the day home we go for a cowboy has to sing, and a cowboy has to yell, or his heart would break inside of him at the gates of the home corral. It's the end, it's the old, and the day home we go, home we go. Haven't heard you sing like that for years, Roy. You know, these two used to sing together in the Mountain View Choir. Like little angels up there. <laughs> yeah, but they wasn't. <laughs> Remember the time we tied the long rope around the... Never mind, Cookie. <laughs> Boys, how about singing something soft and pretty for Cap? How about uh, seeing Nellie home? Huh? That's still your favorite, isn't it? Always will be. Snoopy's favorite, too. <laughs> But that song puts Cap to sleep just like it used to. Roy, I've got to talk to you. Well, now, nothing could be as serious as you sound. It is serious. It's about Bert. Is he in some kind of trouble? No. That is, I don't know. Somehow he's changed a lot lately. Well, of course he's changed. He's grown up. I know, but it isn't that. I've raised him since the folks died, and we've always been so close to each other. He doesn't talk to me anymore like he used to. Well, he's just young. You remember how wild and harem scaring I was when I was his age. But Bert has more money than he should have. And he spends most of it on that Gene Loring. He's big enough to take care of himself. Besides, Gene seems like a pretty nice girl to me. But if it'll make you feel any better, I'll have a talk with him. And if there is anything wrong, maybe he'll tell me. Thanks, Roy. And thank you for that pony. He's wonderful. <laughs> how about us trying him out in the morning? It's a date.
it's springtime in the Sierra. <laughs> well, how do you like him by now? Oh, what do you think? I'm sorry, we missed Cap up at his sanitarium. Yeah, so am I. He's usually there in the morning to feed the animals. What'd you find, gold? No, brass. This shell's from a high-powered rifle. And it was fired this morning. But, Roy, the hunting season's closed. Listen. That deer wasn't grazing. He's being chased. See if you can find Cap and bring him here. I might need him. Okay. today. That bigger kid can sure smell him out. Hey, Matt. Where have you been? You're wet. Where's your horse? I turned him loose. Somebody was chasing me. Who was it? Who was it? Roy Rogers. But he didn't get close enough to recognize me. Honest, Matt. Yeah, when friends get nosy, we don't treat them like friends anymore. Oh, but Matt, listen, Shut I... Shut up. You can go back with us. All right, all of it. Drop those guns. Get your hands up. Quick. Fire. I'd just soon kill you in cold blood like you do those deer. Time I caught up with you filthy cowards. Using silencers. Telescope sights. Camouflage jackets. A fine bunch. Oh, but listen, Captain. Yes, there's nothing you can say. I'm sorry you're in this, Bert. It's too bad. A young fellow like you'd get mixed up in this sort of thing. After what your sister's gone through to raise you to be a decent man. I'd do anything not to hurt your sister, Bert. But you're gonna have to come along with the rest of them. It's the end of a long, bloody trail. All right, get your horses. Let's get out of here. Drop that gun, Captain Foster. Put up your hands. Mm -hmm. 
I was afraid this would happen sooner or later. Pick up your guns, boys. I'll give you a chance to explain. This is going to hurt a little bit. Get up. One more break like that and you won't be able to. But you didn't have to murder him. I didn't murder him. Take him over to that place where he feeds the animals and put this in his hand. Now get this straight. Captain Foster just accidentally shot himself. talk to you. What do you want? Were you riding a horse this morning with the R brand on him? No, I wasn't. Anything else? No, that's all. Except that Cap Foster's dead. How did it happen? He accidentally shot himself. Found him up at his sanitarium. You better go in and see your sister. She's taking it pretty badly. Sure, Roy. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Amen. In the sky, the bright stars glitter. On the banks the pale moon shone, and was from and diners quilting party. I was seeing Nelly home. I was seeing Nelly home. I was seeing Nelly home, and was from. I was seeing Melody On my arm a soft hand rested Rested light as ocean foam And was from Mantina's quilting party I was seeing Nelly home. I was seeing Nelly home. I was seeing Nelly home. And was from Mantina's quilting party. I was seeing Nelly That's all, Cap, except there's going to be a lot of us miss you. It's going to be a lot of the animals miss you, too, Cap. But you can rest easy. Because I'll come up here every evening and take care of them just like you did. You too, Snoopy. Boys, I think we ought to stick around a few days and fix the place up a little for Taffy and Bert. All right, yeah, well, that's, that's a good, good idea. idea. Yes, it is. It was sure swell of Cap to leave those two kids the ranch. Hey, Roy, here's those pictures you wanted. Thanks. Hello, Jimmy.
boys. I think Cap Foster was murdered. What makes you think murdered? murdered? How do you figure? Well, he told me he was on the trail of some people who were killing off the wild game around here. I think he caught up with them and they shot him. But the coroner said the bullet that killed him came from his own gun. The gun was fired right against his chest. Powder burns proved that. I know. They made it look pretty good, except for two things. Cap Foster was the safest man in the world with a gun. You know that, Cookie. Yeah. And he was left-handed. That's right. Well, whoever shot him and left him laying up here didn't know that. They placed a gun in his right hand. Ooh-wee! We ought to tell the sheriff. Not yet, Cookie. But if he was murdered, he ought to know. Yeah, let right. the law okay. Wait a minute. We've got to make sure we're right first. So, fellas, don't say a word about this to anybody. Okay, okay, all right. We'll see. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Snoopy. Oh, come on, get out of there. You can't spend the winter in there now. Nice load this week, thanks to you. Jean, I came over to tell you I can't work for you anymore. Bert says he can't work for us anymore. What's the matter, Bert? Aren't you happy? Don't we treat you right? Oh, it's not that. I've got to run the ranch. The cat left us now, and, well, I, I won't have time. I think you'll find time, Bert. Don't forget how you and your sister got that ranch. I wish we didn't have it. I can't sleep nights. I keep thinking of... Ow! Anytime you get tired of your job here, just remember that you're an accessory to Cap Foster's unfortunate accident. But I'm afraid of Roy. He saw me that day, and I know he suspects something. He may trail me again. Maybe he will trail you again. Maybe we want him to trail you again. It'll be the last trailing he ever does. Oh, but Roy is my... You see, we can't afford to lose you now. We've got too much tied up in all this, and so have you. I have a few plans for this community, and they include you. You run up to the house now and wait for me. I have some money for you. Okay, Jim. Sure, Bert. Everything's going to be all right. Forget it. don't seem to be so stuck on you anymore. Oh, he'll be okay. I guess the funeral got him. What's this plan for the community stuff? I'm going to give a big charity social here at the Lazy W. It's to be a basket party with the proceeds to go to a memorial fund for Captain Foster. Are you crazy? You want this place overrun with yokels? You know how nosy people can get. Sometimes I wonder what you use for brains, Matt. Don't you see this will make us established, respected members of this community? It's just the old con game. Make people like you and they'll believe anything. It's going to be a wonderful party. We might even have a kissing booth. <laughs> well, folks, first, before we auction off the lunches, I think we ought to thank our hostess, Miss Jean Loring, for a swell party. I got a surprise for you. A couple of folks here have prepared a song. Our own Taffy Baker and a boy that you will remember that used to sing around here in the choir, Roy Rogers. Roy, let's give him a hand and have a nice song. I took a trip to Mexico to spend a week or two. And there I met the finest fellow that I ever knew. His name was Pedro. From Acapulco. And he goes about <laughs> just singing all the day. He is Pedro. From Acapulco. And his song will surely win your heart away. The girls adore him. Keep waiting for him. For he brings a little sunshine when he smiles. And when he goes going by, all the senoritas cry, Viva Pedro! 
He's singing all day long his merry little song, and you can say it's wrong. Viva Pedro! I'm a Capuco. Say I'm a Pedro. Say I'm a Capuco. The sooner we get rid of that cow hand, the better. I've got ways of doing it so no one will ever know. Not till I say so. Two accidents around here in a row might not look so good. We can't stand any investigation. That's what I mean. Rogers is a nosy amateur. That's why I want to find out just how much he knows before anything happens to him. Pedro no puede estar contento sin cantar. No puedo gritar. Viva Pedro! Tomato poco. Thanks, Bobby, for coming to our And now, folks, we come to the most important part of the whole evening: food. <laughs> In each one of these little lunch baskets it's got the name of the girl who fixed it. And the highest bidder gets to share it with her. Uh, here's a little, <clears throat> little basket, but it's got a lot of big surprises with it. And you'll never guess who made it. Ooh. No, that's a surprise. <laughs> you better get out of here before somebody puts you in a cigar. <laughs> All right, who'll start it out? How much am I offering? One dollar. One dollar I've got. Who'll make it two? Do I hear two? That's only two dollars. Two dollars? No, no, no. Come on, make it three. Three dollars. Three dollars. Do I hear four? Who'll make it four? Sold for three dollars. Miss Willow Crunch. Can I ask? Can I ask? Can I ask? There he is. <laughs> Nothing but all of She's on a diet. <laughs> now, here's the little beauty. Oh, smells like real living. Let's don't be cheap. Come on, start it off with a big... Which one of you just will make it two dollars? Take a chance and see what lovely lady made this one. All right, who's going to start it off? How much am I offered? One thousand dollars. One thousand. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> One dollar the man bid. Who'll make it two? Ten dollars. Roy. So. That's not my lunch. It isn't. Well, wonder whose it is. Gene Laurie. Right here. <laughs> Oh, here's a lunch fit for a king. Let me take a peek, see what's in here. You want to sit here? <laughs> You'll never guess. Who starts the It's awfully place? noisy out here. It sure One dollar. Let's go One dollar. Who'll make it three dollars? One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. The man says, who'll make it four? Four One dollar. dollar. Brother, you bought something. Bring me the dollar. Just put the lunch down on the table. I'll stir up the fire a little. This party of yours is a fine thing, Gene. I'm sure Cap Foster's friends all appreciate it. I hope so. It's the least I can do. I see you like guns. Yes, my father taught me to shoot and ride when I was a little girl. I'll bet he did a good job of it, too. Oh, this one's a beauty. It was made in Austria before the war. Handles well and hits like a cannon. Do you have trouble finding ammunition for it? Yes. That's why I don't use it often. I'm starving. You spread the lunch and I'll go get some coffee. I'm not fussy. Sorry, it isn't something more solid. So am I. 
little cold venison would be good. Uh, is there a season of some kind on deer? Yes, but the deer don't know it. Neither do the people who buy them. Well, the law does. Really? Well, that's interesting. Depends on what you're interested in. Right now, it's food. Thanks for saving my place. Come on, break it up. How long can a guy live without breathing? <laughs> Step aside, boy. Let a man get with it. Now, 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 wait a minute, Pat. Let's be humane about this. You know, Taffy, I think you're getting just a little jealous. There's no reason for it. That was a swell lunch, Gene. Thanks. Too bad Bert didn't give it. Why Bert? He seems to be pretty interested in you. Bert? He used to be around here a lot, but it was just puppy love. Oh? we better get back to the party. After all, I am the hostess. My hat. Do me a favor and round up the boys and play that old tune that Cap likes so well, will you? Right now? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my coat and go home. Cap, you know, wait a minute. Well, Bert, how'd you like your lunch? Oh, okay, I guess. It's funny they should play that old tune. It sure brings back memories. Bert, I'd like to talk to you. Do you mind? Oh, no, go ahead, Roy. You know, you told me you weren't riding an R brand horse the other morning, remember? That's right. You were lying, Bert. Why? What do you mean? Listen, Roy, why don't you go back to your ranch instead of looking for trouble? Because I like it here. Because I'm going to find out who killed Cap Foster. The coroner said he was killed accidentally. That's not so, and you know it. Are you accusing me? You got the ranch, didn't you? Roy! Stop! Stop it! You know you can whip him? Leave us alone, sis. I started this, and I'm going to finish it. Bert, what's wrong with you? You're acting like a child. They're not children. Leave them alone. Take your hands off me. Take it easy, kid. Leave me alone, Matt. This makes you a pretty brave guy, don't it, Rogers? Stay out of this, Matt. I can fight my own bat. Sure, sure, I know. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? What are you sticking your nose into this for? This fight isn't between you two. It's all right, Cookie. He's big enough. What? Bert. Yes, sis? Take me home. Please take me home. Oh, sure, sure, sis. <laughs>
Nice going, Roy. Take him back to the bunkhouse, boys, and get him cleaned up. I'm sorry about this, Jean. Never mind. Thanks for teaching Matt a lesson. He had no business interfering. Come on, fellas. Touch up the joint. Let's get the party started. Come on, Bud. Everybody listen. Oh. fortune say today, Cookie. Huh? Oh, nothing, nothing. Never trust a fat man. Oh, now, Roy, you know you never can believe one of those things. Come <laughs> on in. Roy, I sure hate to say this to you, but you sure made a fool out of yourself at Jane's social. What you said to Bert was a little rough. That's what I want to talk to you about, Cookie. I did it on purpose. I had to find out for sure about Bert. Bert? You mean he's mixed up in Cap's murder and everything? I'm afraid he is. Why, that little... What do you know about Jean Loring and her friend Matt? Oh, nothing much, just except they come out here from somewhere in the east. I got a lease on the Lazy W for them, and they put in some improvements and some new equipment. Got the place looking right nice. What kind of equipment? Oh, the average stuff is, is pretty run down. Seems to me that Gus down at the transfer company did say they shipped in the largest refrigerating plant that he ever did haul. Refrigerating plant? Yeah, I guess some city folks like that frozen food. They might use it for storage. Oh, not that much. They raise horses, not beef. They could store things worth a lot more than beef, like geese and ducks and venison. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Bird. They're sure talking turkey to him. I think we better do the same thing. Here it is, Pappy. Six four eight. Want me to get it for you? No, thanks, Pat. I'll get it. Uh, six four eight, please. Hello? Hello, Lazy W? Oh. Well, this is Kathy Baker. Could I please speak to my brother, Miss Loring? Just a moment. Oh, Bert! What is it? You want it on the telephone. It's your sister. Oh. Hello? Yes, of course I'm all right. Well, when are you coming home? Bert, Bert, you can't meet... Hello? Hello, Bert? What's the matter? Anything wrong? He said he's not coming home. He hung up on me. Where are you going? To the Lazy W to see Bert. You want someone to go along with you? No, thanks, Pat. This is a private affair. Hi, fellas. Oh, hello, oh, Ellen. Right. Where's Bert? Still off the Lazy W. Said he's not coming back. Does Taffy know? Yeah, she's on her way up there now. You better wait here, Cookie.
a minute, Taffy. Haven't you caused me enough trouble? Put me down. But you can't go up there. You'd be in danger and so would Bert. Why? Because Cap Foster was murdered. Murdered? Cap murdered? Yes, and I think Bert knows who did it. Oh, Roy. How would Bert know about it? I don't know. But that's what I have to find out. And I might need your help, Taffy. Oh, sure, Roy. Hello. Yeah. Just a minute. It's Cookie. Ask him if he knows where Rogers is. Hello. This is Jean. Have you seen Roy? He's there. And my pictures are ready? Uh-huh, they're all ready. I'll be right down for them. Thank you very much. What a break for us, Matt. Hang on, I'll be right back. Roy, this is just like messing around with a bear trap. There's nothing else I can do, Cookie. If they're setting a trap for me, I'll just have to be lucky and spring it first. Well, it's all right if you're tired of living. Did you ever hear of the wooden horse of Troy? Huh? You remember that old story of how the Greek captured the city of Troy? They built a big wooden horse, put some soldiers inside of it. The people of Troy didn't know they were in there. Pulled it inside the gates. When night came, the soldiers came out and captured the place. Well, where are you going to get a horse that big? Maybe Trigger's big enough. Oh, well, how are you going to hide in Trigger? Oh. You ain't going to hide me in no horse. Besides, I don't think Trigger would like it. Here she is now. Don't forget to turn on the charm. Don't you forget to play the right note. With a little imagination. Anyone can dream of this, and this term of recreation has never hurt anyone yet. Imagine me as a city dude with a silk hat, cane, and spats. Oh, what a picture I would make! Say, ain't he the cat? Imagine me as a jungle gent, fighting lions just for fun. Oh, what a picture I would make. Say, ain't he the one? I'm Corporal Roy, I'm a drummer boy, back in 76. Or I can be just a jitterbug, dancing to some hot licks. Kaboom! Imagine us as a bride and groom, as the Mary's vows we made. Oh, what a picture we would take if the camera didn't break. I got your pictures of the party all finished. They turned out swell. Well, thanks so much for calling me. That'll be a dollar. Thank you. There you are. Hello, Taffy. Don't you hello me, Roy Rogers. You'll find your luggage out front. But he can't stay here, Taffy. You keep out of this, Cookie. Yes, ma'am. I don't care if I never see you again. She'll never get over this. Neither will that door. I think you're right, Cookie. Yeah. Well, gee, Roy, I haven't got any room here. Yeah, I know. The invitation to the Lazy W is still open. I wouldn't want to put you out any. You wouldn't. There's plenty of room. Why don't you get your things and we'll ride out together? You, you just talk him into it. Why don't you, Roy? All right, thanks. I'll see you later, Cookie. Yeah. Hey, Cookie. It's too tabby. I didn't know you in that outfit. <laughs> well? How'd I do? You did swell. I think we sold her. Yeah. I think you overdid it on the door. If I'd have known you were going to break the window, I'd have charged her four dollars for the picture. Matt, we have a guest. 
Roy's going to stay with us for a few days. Sorry about the other day, Rogers. I kind of lost my head, I guess, but you're more than welcome here as far as I'm concerned. Well, I've forgotten about that, Matt. Why don't you take your things over to the bunkhouse? I'll see you later. Thanks, Jean. Well, that was easy. Sure. You know, I think he kind of likes you. Really? Maybe he'll change his mind. <laughs> oh, that sure yeah. was. Oh, that was easy. Hey, you didn't need Yeah, I know, Cookie. I'm not very hungry. I'm worried about Roy. He said he'd phone an hour ago. Oh, oh, yeah, Give him a little time. He'll call. Well, I hope so. Why don't you run on, Taffy? We'll do the ditches, won't we, boys? Oh, oh sure. Sir. We always? Yeah, but let's get it going. <laughs> now listen, all you renegades, do what I've got to say. You'd better start to settle down and save your extra pay. In 45 or 50 years, we'll all be old and gray. Did any of you ever stop to think, what you gonna do then? Oh, oh, what are you gonna do then? When you are old, your feet get cold, Pat, what you gonna do then? If I keep packing this heavy load, I'll be all wrinkled like a horny toad, and they'll use my wrist for scrubbing board when I get old and gray. Oh, what are you going to do then? Oh, what are you going to do then? When your bones all rattle and you can't herd cattle, you, what you going to do then? Well, I'll learn the lingo of a chocolate ball, and then I'll marry me an Indian squall, so we can live with her maw and ball when I get old and gray. Oh, what are you going to do then? Oh, what are you going to do then? When you're down and out with the pain and gout, Cookie, got any ideas? I'll sing as sweet as an old bullfrog, eat skeeter stew and pollywogs, and sleep all winter in a holler lung when I get old and gray. Oh, that's what we're gonna do then. Oh, that's what we're gonna do then. When the bones all rattle and they can't hurt cattle, that's what we're gonna do then. Cookie! It wasn't my fault, I was going out here when... See, I didn't break out. Oh, I'm so nervous now. I... Oh, Cookie, I wish you'd stop clowning. Go on in, take a good look. Yes, it's venison. We get a fancy price for it. That's what you were looking for, isn't it? This is what Cap Foster was looking for. That's right. You know what happened to him. You can't shoot me. Even if you made this one look like an accident, too. There would be an investigation. You don't want that. Get a rope, Matt. We have no intention of shooting you. Take off your coat, Rogers.
It's a good thing I got back here in time or you'd be up on one of those meat hooks. Yeah? I was doing all right. When he gets good and cold, there won't be a coroner in the state could tell what happened to him. He'll just be found dead somewhere out in the hills. No bullet holes, no nothing. Hey, Gene. Yeah. I forgot to tell you. The boy said Bert packed up and left. When? About a half hour ago. Well, why didn't you tell me? What chance did I have? We've got to stop that kid somehow. He's about ready to break. I have a hunch where he'll go before he leaves. Get your horse. Well, you still like me, don't you, Snoopy? <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. I just came up to say goodbye to Cap and you. Want to shake hands, say goodbye? Huh. Oh, now, don't you worry. Cookie and sister are going to take good care of you. Up you go. Hello, Bert. Going somewhere? Yeah, I'm clearing out. Don't you think we ought to talk about it? You've already done too much talking to me. You said you were only going to kill game. But you killed Cap. Oh, I'm sorry, Bert, but I had to. But somebody will find out. If it's Roy you're worrying about, you can forget it. We've got him on ice and he'll never leave the ranch alive. Roy? Well, you can't do that, Gene. You've got to let Roy go. I'll take the blame for killing Cap. Please, I'll do anything you say. What's well, eating you, kid? I can't sleep nights thinking of Cap lying out there with a bullet through him. Oh, I know it's partly my fault, but I'll take all the blame if you let Roy go. I don't want that to be on my conscience, too. I'm afraid it's a little late for that, Bert. Roy knows everything, and he'll never keep quiet. Isn't that right? Sure. Maybe Bert would like to have a little talk with Roy and get straightened out in his own mind. Get on your horse. You, you dirty murderer! There, you devil crossing little. I'll check your coat for you. Gene, Gene, if you shot Roy like you did, Cap. Shut up! Your friend's taking a little nap now. When he wakes up, you two can have your little talk. This is better than you deserve. Understand freezing's an easy way to die. Miss Loring, you want it on the telephone. Well, thanks, I'll take it out here. Hello? Hello, Miss Loring? Well, this is Taffy Baker. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Are Roy and Bert there? No, I haven't seen either of them. Oh, I see. You haven't seen them at all? No, no, nothing important. Thank you very much. I can't understand it. She wouldn't even let me talk to Roy. Well, well what's, what's the, the idea? idea? Must be, be there. Well, maybe she had a good reason. Cookie, can't we do something? Saddle up, boys. I got an idea. Where are you going? Going down to the transfer company to talk to Gus about a wooden horse. A wooden horse? Sounds crazy to me, too, but let's get going. <laughs> Hey, Bert. Oh, I thought you were... Oh, I never felt better in my life. I'm sorry about everything, Roy. I told them I'd take the blame if they let you go. Forget it, Bert. Right now, our problem's to get out of here. See, I'm getting the hand loose. You got a match? No, but there's a lighter in my right hip pocket. I'll see if I can get it. Over a little bit, Bert. I got it. Bert, this isn't going to be much fun. I 
think I can burn the rope in two without hurting you too much. Sure, Roy. Go ahead. It's better than freezing here. I'll try it here by your wrist. Maybe I can do it without catching your clothes on fire. Roy. Yeah? I saw him shoot Cap. Who? Gene. Cap caught us red-handed. I never gave him a chance. Butchers. They deserve the same thing. Can you take it a couple of seconds more, Bert? Keep going. There he is. Here, you better put this on. This place is built like a fort, and we might be here for quite a while. One good thing, this door swings out. We might be able to use this. Give me a hand. You can use this thing for a battering ram. Makes a lot of noise, Roy. We can't help it. We've got to get out of here. Come on, Cookie. Can't you go any faster? Not without a pilot's license, I can't. The lock's given. A couple more times ought to do it. in the tack room. Good. It's just around the bend. Hold this outside of your horse. Thanks, Bert, but you didn't have to do that. Roy. Roy, I, I can't move my legs. Am I hurt bad? We'll get out of here, Bert. Take it easy. Tell Taffy I'm, I'm sorry about everything and take care of her. I still think I can whip you. Sure you can, Bert. Well, in no time, you'll be... Back in's covered now. on the other side of the fence and cover me. I'm going in. You stay here. This may be a little rough.
get it. Looks like she's gonna need some beauty treatments. <laughs> Where she's going, they don't give beauty treatments. I've lived in the West all my life. I never saw so many people chasing so many people. <laughs> <laughs> Now the long day is through on the prairie There's a low-hanging sun in the sky On the home corral we will tarry And we'll sing of the roundups in the days gone by yippee yippee and the day home we go For a cowboy has to sing And a cowboy has to yell his heart would break inside of him at the gates of the home corral. We're going to miss you around here, Roy. The boys are going to miss you, too. The boys? So am I, Taffy. <laughs> All right, break it up. Free.